The scripture reading today is from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, commonly called the vision of the dry bones. A prophet in the Old Testament should mainly be thought of as a truth teller. In speaking to the powerful, prophets often had stern messages that demanded change. In speaking to the people, the prophets often had messages of hope and comfort. This is one of the latter, a message given to God's people in a time when it seemed all hope was lost, that life was little more than a valley of dead, dry bones. From the 37th chapter of Ezekiel. <clears throat> the hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them, and there were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and I will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put the breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophecy to the breath. Prophecy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O oh, breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Thanks be to God for these words of life. This will be fun. Raise your hand if you've heard of Avicii. Okay, like a few. What about like EDM in general? Okay, several more. I see you, Jeannie. <laughs> EDM, or electronic dance music, can trace its roots back to the early days of hip hop, and really all the way back to disco, with their pioneering use of drum machines and synth. So really, you out there are to blame for this. <laughs> Avicii, known to his friends and family as Tim Bergling, exploded onto the music scene in 2011 with the song Levels, which Steven played for us on the uh, organ this morning as the prelude. Levels reached the top 10 in 10 different countries. I was 23, and I remember visiting my middle sister in college and hearing that song over and over and over in the frats, uh, and it was still good every time. Uh, but no one had heard of Avicii at that point. In Europe, however, he had been relentlessly playing clubs all over. Levels certainly opened doors for him in 2011, but between 2008, when he was 19 years old and 2012, so that's in four years, in four years he played 550 shows. That's averaging two and a half shows a week. 
And Levels just really increased the demand for him. So although his venues got much larger, he didn't slow down his touring schedule. Perhaps not surprisingly, he burned out and retired from playing live shows in 2016. He played 813 shows in eight years. To give you a reference point for this, Zeppelin played 100 to 200 shows fewer, and they did it with four more years. On Netflix, there's a great documentary that tracks Avicii's meteoric rise to fame, but it also captures the pain that Tim endured. He had brutal anxiety before these shows, and after self-medicating, he winds up with a drinking problem. He gets pancreatitis, his gallbladder and appendix rupture, and the docs just keep pumping him full of prescription-grade painkillers so he can continue touring. He does all these shows despite being out for days or weeks at a time with medical issues, not to mention taking time to record studio albums. Late in the film, he flat out doesn't want to play shows anymore, but his staff keeps pushing him to fulfill his contractual obligations. As viewers, we can really only watch as anxiety just consumes him. And do you know how this story ends? Tim took his own life in April of last year after a long battle with mental health issues and addiction. Can you hear me, SOS? Help me put my mind to rest. Two times clean and I'm acting low, a pound of weed and a bag of blow. See, what Avicii did was take EDM not only in new directions musically, but the content of his songs dives much deeper than your standard club hits. The song is a painful self-disclosure. A pound of weed and a bag of blow, now sure, EDM has long been associated with drug culture, particularly club drugs, that's their name, um, like ecstasy, but those quantities are not party favors. For those of you who may not know, a pound of weed and a large bag of cocaine is far more than any one person needs for a good time. I don't care what your tolerance level is. This isn't a glorification of drugs. It's a confession. Help me put my mind to rest. I get robbed of all my sleep as my thoughts begin to bleed. There aren't enough drugs in the world to satisfy that kind of desire to be numb. One of the sayings in AA is one drink is too many and a thousand isn't enough. The singer laments, I let go, but I don't know how. I'd address this pain, I'd cope with these mental health issues, but I don't know how. The only way I know is to self-medicate. Have you been there? Paul writes in Romans chapter 7, verse 8, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. He continues on a bit later, I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good that I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. So, where do you go? I mean, we all have somewhere we go when we want to turn our brain off. Maybe it's not too bad. Reality television, video games, maybe it's sweets, chocolate. Some of us are quite adept at hiding it, actually. I'm an amateur sommelier. <laughs> I have a very fine, re refined taste in single malt. <laughs> Infidelity, maybe? Something more private, like pornography? Heading to the track? We know it's wrong, and yet we don't know any other way to let go. This is how we cope despite the consequences. I have both mental health struggles as well as addiction on both sides of my family. You name it, and someone I'm related to either has a current problem with it or is in recovery from it. 
Several years back, I fought a few battles myself, some of which I'm still carrying with me. And it's not as uncommon as you might think, particularly for folks in my generation. Studies have shown that half of those who experience mental illness, that includes depression, anxiety, and ADHD, will also experience a substance abuse order, half, and vice versa. So none of this is abnormal. Songs about perfect, effortless love or nonstop partying with no consequences, those are songs about things that don't exist. But a, a dependence on, for the person in the song, weed and coke, and for Avicii alcohol, which is co-occurring with anxiety and depression, this is a song about something very real. And I can't believe that I'm the only person in this room who has dealt with or is currently dealing with it in their life, either directly or indirectly. Now I'm going to take some creative liberties here, but I think the singer could be addressing God. Can you hear me? SOS. Help me put my mind to rest. We have songs just like this in the Bible, actually. They're called Psalms. Psalms of lament, specifically. My enemies are closing in around me. Why do you hide for your face from me? These expressions of suffering are not foreign to us. In fact, we're deeply rooted in them. But as Christians, this suffering, this death, cannot have the final word. That's not what we believe. For us, love wins. So where is the gospel for us this morning? I can feel your love and your touch pulling me up from the underground. I don't need my drugs. We could be more than just part-time lovers. The person in the song knows that this commitment or love of God is part-time. And the desire is there to fully commit. The desire is there to fully let God in and overcome that addiction, at least maybe just for today. Maybe that addiction is too strong for you to take on by yourself, but you don't have to. In this morning's scripture reading, Ezekiel writes that the Lord tells him, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Breathe upon these slain, that they may live. See, although you may wake up some days and feel like death, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, is within you nonetheless. God says, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh my people. Even those who appear or feel dead to the world, these are still God's people. Those whose lives have been stolen away from them by addiction or mental health anguish, these too are included in the house of Israel and the group set aside by God in love. See, I think that at some point, each and every one of us has felt or feels or will feel, if you're around for long enough, like those bones, dry, lifeless, buried in whatever it might be, mental health issues, addiction, job loss, perhaps even more importantly, loss of purpose, physical illness, abandonment from family or friends. There is this inherent brokenness in each one of us, often through no fault of our own. And we, in this brokenness, deeply desire the healing that comes with being more than just part-time lovers, with the source of all love. We often hide our brokenness, perhaps because we feel it's shameful, or will make us look weak. But at least for me, and maybe for you too, despite or perhaps because of my brokenness, I also deeply desire to be seen seen and affirmed in who I am. I find myself seeking love from my neighbor 
for my genuine, broken, authentic, imperfect, and sometimes deeply wounded self. And if I am to love my neighbor as myself, am I helping folks who are in the process of being brought up from the so-called grave? Or have I sat in judgment? As Christians, when the neighbor cries out, can you hear me, SOS, are we listening to help put their minds to rest? Or have we shamed them for the pound of weed and the bag of blow? Have we sought to affirm and love our neighbors in their brokenness? Or have we fallen prey to ascribing blame without a hint of mercy? Will you pray with me? Good and loving God, we pray this morning that you open our eyes. For those of us underground, help us to see what the full-time love of God can look like. Remind us that no form of brokenness is beyond your purview. For those of us above ground, we pray that you open our eyes in awe of what those who feel underground must carry every day. Help us to see the best way to walk in love and affirmation with our brothers and sisters who are under such terrible duress. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, who showed us through the resurrection that even the most extreme brokenness can be made holy and whole again. Amen.